Okay, so you've been studying for years and you're not sure how to continue to improve your English level. Maybe you do grammar exercises now and they've become so easy and so formulaic that you don't even read the sentence. Um, at the same time, your teachers are telling you that you need to use more natural English and maybe you struggle with writing an essay or expressing your opinions. Now, these are all common problems for learners who I think have spent a lot of time in English classes but maybe they don't work in jobs or careers that require them to speak English, or maybe they live in a country where English isn't used on a day-to-day -day basis, or maybe you're preparing for an exam and you're just focused so much on exam preparation, but you don't know how to break through the barrier to really feel like your English is uh, something that you're confident in. What can we do to challenge ourselves and improve our English when we're when we have this situation? That's what we're going to talk about today. Much of the learning we do when we start studying a new language is done in front of a book or in front of a teacher. And this is necessary in order to make the process of building the foundations of this language easier. However, the longer we study a language, any language, the more we need to shift that attention towards ourselves. And we need to think, what exactly do we want to put this new language to use for? So what should we do to take that extra step and really dive into specializing our English? Now, just a gentle reminder that at the end of this video, I'll make sure to give you some links to valuable resources to help you with your search. And we'll talk about what kinds of things you should be searching for. Now, the obvious answer to the question of what we should do on our own in our free time to continue to study would be to read books, lots of books, uh, novels or autobiographies, anything that interests you is valid. However, not everybody's an avid re reader, and, and that's okay. But there are all kinds of books covering all sorts of interesting subjects. And they're also bilingual books. Uh, these are the, the kinds of books that have the same story told in two languages. So you can read it in English, and then if you're not sure, you can check on the uh, other page where the story is told in your own language. Another option is reading the news from different news sources like CNN, BBC, CBC, or Al Jazeera. Now, all of these are excellent sources of news to read in English, but some of them are easier to read than others. Um, I think that CNN is probably the easiest um, main news source, like mainstream news source to read from. The website also has some videos to watch and so and, and it's free and it's international so it's easy for you to find maybe a news piece about something from your own country on CNN in English and read it. That way you already know about the news but you're sort of testing how much you understand when reading these articles. After a while you might want to try a more challenging news source. I would say probably BBC or Al Jazeera might be the hardest of those four. If you are not a reader, you don't like reading books, you don't like reading the news, then listening might be a better option for you. And one way to do that is through audiobooks. Some of us don't have time to sit down and read, but we still want to take advantage of books as an English resource and as a way of expanding our cultural awareness. Um, you can always try audiobooks. Now, there are plenty of websites with paid subscription services for audiobooks. So you pay a monthly fee and you have access to a list of books in audio form. But 
There are also some free audiobooks on YouTube and on some other streaming platforms. So you can always try searching in YouTube for audiobooks and look at the options and see. Now, I have to warn you, a lot of the, these books on YouTube are old, but they're classics. So even though the, the book might be something that's not immediately interesting to you, it's a book that's culturally significant. It might be one of the, you know, most important books of the 20th century. So it could be an, an interesting uh, way to also um, get to know English or American culture through, through audiobooks. Similarly, if you enjoy listening to books in English, you might want to check out some podcasts in English. Probably the first ones you should listen to are ones related to news and current events. And the reason I recommend these is you can easily find information about these events in your own language. So you won't feel lost if you don't understand a piece of news, since you might have heard about it already in your own language. But the world of podcasts is diverse and you can find podcasts about comedy or history, careers, entertainment, self-improvement. There are podcasts devoted to retelling crime stories or horror stories. So if you have time in your day on public transport or in a car, you can easily listen to these as part of your routine. Now, an important note about podcasts is know that if you choose a podcast and you find it overwhelming, maybe you struggle too much to understand it, just know that there are thousands and thousands of other podcasts out there. If you, if your first choice doesn't work for you, continue looking. It might take some time to land on a podcast that you enjoy listening to, but just keep at it until you find one that you enjoy. It's really worth, worth the search. Of course, movies and music are other ways of learning on your own, but movies require time. And you might feel left out if you don't understand some important plot points in a movie and you'll just give up and change the language back to your language. At the same time, music might help you to pick up a few words, but it won't help you in the same way as watching a TED talk and looking through the transcript. The reason for that is we sing, the way we sing, mm, we use slang, we sometimes use uh, wrong, incorrect grammar. Um, and the reason for that is it's just more poetic or it's more lyrical or it sounds better in a song. It's not the way that we talk though and it's, it's not the way that we organize our thoughts. So what I suggest when it comes to music is to listen to classic albums. Um, when I say classic albums, I mean albums that are just well-loved. Either they're on a list of top 50 best songs of the 20th century or top 10 best songs of the 90s. The reason I suggest that is if you read one, if you listen to one of those albums, I'm sure there's going to be a very interesting Wikipedia. There's going to be reviews. There might even be analysis. So if you listen to the album, you love the album, you can read some history about the album, you can read some reviews about the album and see if you agree with the review or disagree. And then you can read some analysis about the album and find out about the history of it, why, why the songs were written, what were they written about. Um, this is a great way of really diving, deep diving into a topic in English. Okay, now this is a note about all of these resources. Um, you may feel the need to keep a dictionary nearby while you're listening or reading. And this sounds great, but what I recommend to students, all of my students, is accept, please accept that you won't understand every single word. And that's okay, that's okay. Instead of reading with a dictionary next to you, just read the book and maybe underline or highlight some words that you want to look up later. 
but don't stop reading to look up words. Just continue reading, and when you have the time, when you have the patience, go back with a dictionary and look up some of those words. Now, the same thing with podcasts. Instead of pausing the podcast because you didn't understand a sentence and you want to listen to it again, instead of doing that, why don't you just write down the timestamp of the the moment in the podcast when you didn't understand something write it down and when you have time when you feel interested then you go back and you listen to it again and you try to understand it again what's important here is that this isn't about 100 percent comprehension just try to understand the text or the podcast on your own um, you need to just build the habit and enjoy reading and listening for what it's worth without thinking about understanding every single word. It's not homework. It's part of your life. You're reading, you're listening to things in English. Um, I guarantee that if the content of a book or a podcast is interesting to you, you're going to want to look up this information anyway. So... Um, so don't worry about understanding everything because maybe it's not interesting to you and that's okay. But when you're listening to something and you find something interesting, then you're probably going to look up that information anyway, okay? So all in all, we learn best when we're interested in a topic. This is a fact. It inspires us to look up new words and make extra effort in understanding the information that's contained. If you're reading something that's not interesting to you, you're going to want to stop reading it as soon as possible. But if you're reading something that's interesting, you're going to want to read more and find out more about it. It's a fact that English classes can sometimes cover some not very exciting topics, uh, like how many times have you talked about body parts or animals or the weather or climate change in an English class. I'm sure it's been very often if you've studied a lot. And the reason for that is these topics cover a large area of knowledge and for the sake of uh, testing and, and such, your English classes do have that. But however, um, as a language learner, you have to take responsibility for your own path. Uh, maybe you're not interested in learning clothes, but maybe you're interested in fashion in a different way. So you find a podcast that talks about design, or maybe it talks about the business of fashion. You know, what you learn in class is just a way to help you help yourself. So you need to be able to make that effort and look for something that interests you more, more deeply. Um, if you do this, if you manage to do what I'm recommending in this video and what really everybody should do, you'll become one of the, the types of learners who um, just become English speakers. They just live in English. They've got English books on their shelves. They've got English podcasts on their phone. Um, and they talk to their friends about the things that they've read or listened to. Doing this allows you to literally have the world at your fingertips. Um, the kind of information that you can find in English nowadays on the internet is immense compared to any other language. Um, and you can find out things, you know, you, if you read about a current event, you can find um, somebody's opinion on the other side of the world easily. Um, maybe you are interested in reading a book, but it's not translated into your language, you can read that book. Um, there's just an infinite number of possibilities for what you can do when when you allow yourself to to really use this knowledge in a, in a more mm, real world way. OK, so these are the things that English opens up for you if you if you allow it to. That being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. I really hope that today you find one or two resources that you're interested in. Try to read a piece of news, listen to a podcast, watch a video, anything you want to do, try it today. Um, also, just a reminder, if you have not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. 
If, um, if you want to be notified about the next video, please click the notification bell. Um, all of these things help me and give me the motivation to continue to make videos for you. All right. Hope you enjoyed the resources. Hope you enjoyed the video today. Thank you. Thank you. And bye-bye.